Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I want to share with you the process of uh, painting this uh, uh, study by Correggio, originally painted by the Italian painter Correggio, a painter of uh, the Renaissance. And um, this uh, is going to be a very long uh, video, more than uh, two hours long. And I'll try to explain the process as uh, thoroughly as I can and share with you some uh, thoughts and uh, um, ideas on how to uh, paint yourselves uh, something like uh, this. When I'm painting these studies, I'm trying to explore the techniques of those old uh, masters in order to uh, apply what I learn from those to my personal uh, artwork. So, as you see, the first thing that uh, I've done is uh, uh, to, to paint on a wood board that uh, I've prepared with uh, a gesso, a rabbit skin glue gesso. And uh, after this, I will, uh, in this case, I will uh, apply uh, a grey color on the whole uh, surface just to coat the and uh, block the gesso a little bit. Uh, so that uh, it, it's going to lose its uh, absorbency. This uh, grey color is... Uh, um, the material of it is uh, um, egg tempera in this case, but uh, you can also use an acrylic uh, color to block uh, the gesso. After uh, this, I am uh, apply transferring my drawing from my paper on the surface and uh, as you see here at this point uh, I will draw I will paint uh, a very rough uh, uh, underpainting with uh, just using a thin uh, uh, black color uh, to uh, to just uh, find the areas of uh, shadow and uh, light on on the face of this uh, study of course, uh, with uh, thicker color, uh, as you see, I've uh, uh, drawn uh, the outlines and the facial uh, features of uh, hair. And uh, after that, at this point, uh, I will uh, uh, very loosely, very relaxed, uh, say, uh, using uh, again uh, egg tempera or acrylic. Uh, uh, at this point, I will... Uh, uh, try to find these shapes of uh, shadows and light. See how thin the color is. And uh, without much uh, stress or without a lot of, uh, um, you know, detail, I will just uh, apply some uh, color. This is very, uh, this step is very creative in a way, very um, satisfying to, to paint. On my palette I have uh, these paddles of uh, thin color and uh, according to how uh, transparent I want the color to be, I will uh, add more of uh, extempera solution or acrylic, uh, thin acrylic transparent uh, glue to thin the color down. It's uh, almost like uh, painting with uh, watercolor at this uh, point. Now, this uh, I'm not sure how those old masters uh, uh, painted their uh, masterpieces. Uh, I wasn't uh, there, and uh, many of uh, those techniques uh, are uh, lost. We don't have much information. Of course, we have some rough idea of how they must have painted those. But uh, this is uh, my interpretation, let's say, of, uh, of this painting, of the process, and uh, it's the best uh, I could uh, guess in order to achieve a similar, uh, a similar painting like that of uh, Correggio. Now, the many Renaissance artists, of course Da Vinci first, they used uh, the sfumato technique, this is a very interesting technique and uh, I've done some uh, research on that and some uh, studies, some experiment on the sfumato and uh, soon I will upload uh, a video on that. There is already a video from this channel exploring the sfumato, although on the 
on the video that I have uploaded already, DaVinci doesn't um, show much of this uh, technique. He hasn't used a lot of the sfumato technique. But um, I've painted this uh, amazing painting of uh, uh, Christ, uh, the savior of uh, the world, uh, Salvador Mundi. And uh, I will soon share with you some thoughts uh, and uh, um, some process of this uh, sfumato technique. As you see here, I am uh, taking my time. I'm uh, very... Um, although I'm not meticulous in applying these uh, shadows on uh, the... Uh, as the underpainting, uh, I'm still uh, taking my time and I enjoy this uh, process. The brush I'm using here, of course, is uh, a soft uh, brush. It can be either synthetic or uh, Kolinsky, natural bristle. And uh, little by little I will uh, um, go um, lower in value, I will add these uh, shadow, darker uh, shapes of uh, darker color. As I said, uh, this is going to be a long video and uh, it might be <laughs> tiring or boring. I can understand if, uh, uh, if this is uh, too much for you, but uh, I really wanted to not speed the video up too much. This is uh, sped up a little bit. But I really wanted to um, share with you in detail each and every step without uh, omitting any of uh, the steps I have uh, I've taken in order to paint uh, this. Correggio has done um, he has some use of uh, sfumato here and uh, he has done these hazy uh, transitions of uh, uh, color from uh, shadow to light and uh, I really wanted to achieve some of uh, that although in this uh, um, in this study uh, I haven't used this uh, sfumato technique many people say that the sfumato is uh, the transition the this uh, transition from uh, shadow to light but uh, uh, yes, it is uh, this transition, but in a way that uh, really um, resembles to smoke, as the definition of the word the word sfumato is, uh, like uh, fog or like uh, smoke. So not all transitions from light to shadow is sfumato, but uh, um, mm, but um, when you see sfumato, you can really tell it is, uh, of course. Uh, uh, Mona Lisa is painted in that way. This uh, uh, Salvador uh, Salvatore Mundi by Da Vinci again is painted in that similar way. And uh, um, some of these uh, Correggio areas uh, definitely look like uh, sfumato. Mm, I will uh, not uh, use this uh, technique. It's a very specific. Uh, um, way of uh, painting the light and um, soon you will see this technique in uh, one of my next uh, uploads. I'm sure it's going to be a great idea if you just uh, mute me here and uh, just uh, have some music uh, playing and um, just uh, watch the process without uh, my comments uh, on it. It's going to be equally um, informative, I believe.
Really, by painting these studies, I don't aspire to make copies of those or to explore the specific materials and pigments that those old masters used. It's not a scientific, let's say, approach of these old masterpieces. More, it's like um, a research for my own personal interest, for my own, uh, uh, say, progress. And um, it's really nice to have uh, studied these uh, techniques, to, he to know these techniques uh, and use them as uh, tools for uh, a personal work that can be uh, modern, uh, contemporary, you know, it can be surrealistic or anything uh, you anybody likes. But it's good as uh, painters to be able to paint uh, like this and use this way of uh, painting in, uh, uh, if we need to for uh, our own uh, expression, language and work. See here how many thin layers I apply in order to achieve these uh, shadows and uh, um, many researchers of the works of those masters find that uh, there are many layers of uh, painting, both uh, tempera and uh, oil on top of this and this is how I will approach this uh, study. These first layers are with uh, tempera and uh, later on I will apply the um, uh, oil pigments on top. When we paint oil we definitely uh, can add um, paint with oil on top of uh, acrylic or on top of uh, tempera pigments. But uh, of course, as you already know, the opposite cannot be done. We cannot uh, paint uh, uh, tempera on top of uh, oil uh, painting. As I'm uh, studying this, I really uh, admire those old masters, their um, devotion, their uh, uh, mastery, it's uh, almost a mystery to me how they could achieve such a, a technical uh, peak, <clears throat> so much, uh, um, how can they could paint so much uh, beauty in their paintings and uh, with so few means, in my opinion. They didn't have uh, photography or uh, so many references. It means that they had to work uh, a lot. They had to work a lot from uh, life, drawing and painting from life. And um, I assume they didn't have uh, so, ma so many things to disrupt their focus, to disrupt uh, their concentration uh, like we have today. As we paint, uh, we... Um, our telephone can constantly uh, ring or we have messages from uh, everywhere <clears throat> and uh, um, this can uh, disrupt our concentration, our, uh, um, our focus on the painting. I don't know, but it's really something to admire on, on these old uh, masters. So here I've decided after I've uh, done this uh, underpainting and uh, continuing uh, doing the underpainting uh, to, uh, to light more further this uh, face by adding uh, some uh, uh, the, the, the shapes of light on, uh, on it as uh, a grisel, let's say, creating a painting that is uh, monochromatic uh, in a way and uh, this will give me more a better idea of these shapes of uh, uh, light on on this head and uh, um, what's uh, happening uh, what's going to happen later on when i will uh, add more color Again, this is uh, very, very satisfying, it's nice. And see how I'm using um, very thin colors again to, to proceed with uh, um, exploring the volume on the head. I 
I don't mind uh, these uh, brush strokes, uh, and I don't mind at this point being uh, uh, loose in the way of handling the, the brush. This is just uh, titanium white. You can break it a little bit by adding uh, some uh, um, yellow ochre just to make it a little bit more warm or a little bit of uh, black just to grayish, uh, just a tiny little bit. But even if you use uh, pure titanium uh, white uh, and thin the color down, it's gonna be fine. Now, if you use uh, egg tempera, Mm, the layers that we use cannot exceed more than let's say 15 or 16 uh, layers. I find that uh, after that uh, the tempera can collapse, can flake away, something like that. If you use acrylics for this you can use as many layers uh, as you like. But uh, I don't think there will be... you, <laughs> you will exceed so many layers in order to achieve this uh, Grisel painting. Many ask me why, um, why we have to do this uh, underpainting since everything will be covered in color later on. Uh, th that's a fair question and uh, the answer to that is that um, first we explore and we practice a little bit uh, by doing this underpainting. We practice on what's going to follow later on. Um, secondly, this underpainting informs the painting uh, later on, the, the actual color that we will add, because it can shine uh, through the colors that uh, we will uh, add and uh, make uh, the painting more rich, visually more rich and more uh, dense, let's, let's say. You see that I'm using the tip of my Kolinsky brush uh, here to, to explore, to find these uh, areas, uh, the tiny areas of uh, light. And uh, it's okay if uh, you have to remember that uh, when we do these studies, it's okay if uh, the result is not uh, perfect. It's uh, okay if our painting is not as uh, um, visually amazing <laughs> as uh, our reference, that's fine. The important, in my opinion, is to just uh, spend some time in uh, our studios to, uh, to practice a little bit, to concentrate and, uh, as I said before, being in a world uh, full of uh, distractions, to find some time and uh, j be just uh, ourselves uh, and the paintings uh, in the studio, this is so healthy and uh, uh, really creates some quality time for our uh, uh, mental balance, for our mental health, that uh, it's really valuable. We have to consider these things when we are in the studio, that uh, what we do now, no matter if the result is great, fantastic or whatever, if it is even better, but uh, the important is that uh, we do something that is uh, healthy, uh, much like the time we take to to go to the gym, to you know, to exercise our bodies. The same thing with uh, painting or any other kind of uh, hobby or art. To uh, be be able to, and uh, concentrate, uh, be able to um, to dive a little bit uh, in our thoughts uh, and. Uh, the study that uh, we do. So I'm always uh, glad uh, when people find these videos inspirational and uh, um, they say to me that uh, it was uh, um, they were inspired to, to get into the studio and paint a little bit more. That's uh, a contribution uh, I find uh, since uh, uh, I'm so sure that being creative, uh, even if it is just uh, uh, a copy of uh, or a study on the old masters, being creative and creating something with in your studio is so healthy.
So be in the studio, uh, be bold. Many people find <laughs> intimidating to uh, to study these old masters. They truly find this intimidating. But uh, I would uh, advise to just uh, uh, throw away the fear. Um, don't listen to our fears. Be a little bit uh, bold. And uh, with some sense of uh, humor, either uh, we can uh, approach these uh, these studies and uh, see what uh, we can learn out of uh, those. I have uh, sped up the video um, two times. That means that. Uh, Um, what you see here is not the actual time. Uh, I'm saying this because when you want to try and paint like this, don't be um, intimidated by the fastness of uh, this uh, video of me painting this. I, I paint much uh, slower, uh, half the time. So, yeah, just for you to know how slow this process can be. Here, adding some light on her uh, shoulder. Now, at this point, it doesn't look anything uh, like the final painting. You see, it's it's looking more like uh, um, a medieval approach in the way of uh, handling the brush strokes. This lin linear handling of the brush strokes, uh, a way of uh, painting that is uh, most common in the Byzantine uh, era and the early um, the early Renaissance uh, and before that uh, period of, in the history of art. But uh, as I said, this is just uh, uh, Grisel painting, another painting that uh, will give me an idea of uh, what is going to follow. I'm really glad to do this uh, long video. It's a way of, for me to connect with you. To um, It's almost as if I have uh, you here in front of me while I'm recording this uh, lesson. And um, I have to say that it does feel uh, nice somehow. I, it does feel uh, like communicating uh, something. So thank you so much. If you... If you are still here, those of you who listen to this, uh, really thank you so much. Let me know if the, in the comments uh, uh, if this is uh, somewhat helpful for you, if you get something nice out of this uh, video. You know, life can be uh, hard sometimes, and uh, especially for us uh, painters, uh, for us who have uh, other daily jobs and we struggle to find some time in the studio, um, things can be um, hard sometimes. So it's really nice to do these studies, to, to dive a little bit in uh, the painting. One thing I enjoy when I'm doing this is that uh, I don't really have to think of my artwork. I don't really have to search for ideas or whatever. It's just pure exploration of these techniques. And uh, it's really relaxed. Of course, when I'm doing this, uh, before starting painting, I say to myself that uh, even if things uh, do not work out and even if uh, I don't reach uh, a desirable, nice uh, um, uh, painting at the end, uh, this is uh, fine. So now, as you see, I have uh, finished this uh, underpainting and uh, by itself uh, it has some charm and it does look uh, nice. So now I've uh, proceeded with uh, uh, painting with oil colors, oil pigments, and uh, I've I'm sure that uh, now, at this point, um, my underpainting has blocked the gesso uh, enough to uh, to lose much of the absorbency. I don't want to apply oil uh, color and uh, 
the gaso underneath uh, absorbs uh, the, the oiliness of the pigment and uh, I get a color that is very dull, very um, yeah, dull, but so I make sure that um, I have applied much uh, tempera. I can also, if uh, still there is some absorption of uh, from the gesso and I get this dull uh, oil painting, I can, uh, before proceeding with painting with oil, as I do now, I can coat the whole underpainting with some kind of uh, glue. If uh, I paint with egg tempera, I will apply um, some um, or a very thin coat of uh, um, rabbit skin glue or I can varnish the uh, the painting with uh, with a varnish that uh, I use at the end of uh, the painting but uh, if I use uh, if, if I have used acrylic to do the underpainting I can apply a thin coat of uh, acrylic uh, glue before painting uh, oil I hope this uh, makes sense. Many oil painters struggle with us with uh, this. Uh, they apply painting, and uh, the painting uh, doesn't shine. Doesn't uh, um, it looks very uh, ugly in the way? Be just because the gas underneath and the surface underneath uh, absorbs uh, the oils and the pigments, and um, what's left is just uh, uh, a dull uh, color that cannot be manipulated. So here what I've done is uh, I've created on my palette um, a color that is uh, yellow, reddish, uh, brownish color as you see here. Um, and uh, I've, I've started applying this uh, color. I assume in my mind that uh, this will be the shadowy areas of uh, this portrait. The shadow area of this portrait has this brownish uh, ochre like uh, uh, color and um, I will apply this uh, color on the areas of the shadows. Again it's almost as if it is an underpainting. I use thinner versions of this color and uh, thicker versions to uh, to paint, especially in the areas of transition, I will use a thinner color like this. It looks messy, but uh, as I said, um, this study is an exploration of uh, uh, what Correggio must have um, uh, used in order to, to paint such a beautiful portrait. It does look uh, a little bit messy, but uh, I will try to bring it uh, um, at some point that will look uh, nice. Sometimes while we are painting we can lose uh, the original drawing, uh, the placement, we can cover the facial features with color and lose them, but uh, then we, will, uh, we can explore and uh, find them again. That's why it's very important, not just this, but this is one reason that uh, it's very important to know how to draw, to always uh, uh, hone our drawing uh, skills. Uh, here, as you see, I'm using a dry brush to to manipulate this uh, this color and uh, um, move the color uh, away in some areas of light so that uh, the underneath uh, gray color will be exposed. I'm using this uh, dry brush. I wipe it. Uh, I wipe the excess color that it uh, accumulates, and I retouch this uh, painting. Of course, at this uh, uh, early stage of painting with oil on top of the of the tempera, I'm not using, I'm not adding any extra linseed oil on my palette. I'm just thinning my oil with uh, turpentine. Many people, me included, are. Uh, um, have some fear when we paint this, especially on these uh, on, on the early steps where um, 
things are messy and um, doubt is something that really um, gets into my ears thoughts like oh my god this is horrible uh, this will uh, get nowhere this is not uh, what these old masters used to do and uh, we have to recognize these voices, these thoughts in our heads, uh, to to accept those, uh, maybe, and uh, still proceed with uh, this adventure, with trying to understand uh, and trying to learn something of this. As I said earlier, anyway, it's uh, a, it's a benefit to to paint. Okay, maybe it's not the actual uh, pigments that those masters used. Maybe it's not uh, the actual step uh, that these masters uh, uh, did, but uh, still it's uh, something that will uh, uh, give me knowledge, that will familiarize uh, me with the material more, that I will learn more how oil behaves. Oil is uh, really an amazing uh, material it does have uh, innumerable applications and uh, i don't think uh, anyone can uh, uh, learn oil painting uh, in a lifetime it's really it's truly really amazing what you can do with uh, this material anyway um, this is uh, nice uh, still uh, to being able uh, to forget these uh, thoughts, uh, these non-productive, non-creative thoughts, and still proceed with painting, even if the result uh, is not good, even if the the technique is not the same to that of the old uh, master, it still uh, worths our time and effort to to study those and um, to aspire to paint something like uh, this. So now, after I've done this first coat of uh, uh, this brownish ochre-like uh, um, color, I will proceed with uh, creating a slightly darker color to um, draw, let's say, the facial features and uh, paint the areas where I find them to be a little bit uh, darker, like uh, underneath the eye, the eyebrow, as you see here, the edge of the mouth and the chin. <laughs> I can say that uh, sometimes I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm just uh, proceeding in blind. Um, what I say to myself uh, often in these cases is that, okay, I will uh, give uh, some time to, uh, to this study, I will try my best, I will try to guess and, uh, see, and see what uh, can uh, happen. No matter if it is correct or not, I will uh, sit a little bit before my easel and uh, I will uh, uh, do my best and we will see what, uh, what's going to happen. Usually, most of the times, uh, something uh, nice happens, and uh, that's great. Sometimes, uh, if I spend uh, two or more or three sittings or four uh, before a painting that uh, doesn't go anywhere, I will uh, raise my hands up and I will say, okay, maybe it's time to, to give this a break and proceed with uh, something uh, else. Now I'm using an in-between color of this uh, darker brown and uh, less dark and I will try to blend a little bit uh, more these uh, darker colors to make them more uh, a little bit more um, soft. Uh, you see here I'm using uh, again a, a dry brush to, to move the color a little bit around. I am uh, careful to not uh, sweep away the underneath color. This is a delicate uh, process. And 
and uh, here I've missed uh, a little bit of my process. I add, I go even darker a little bit to uh, to define these darks that I find on on the face, like uh, the area in the eye underneath the the nose. I'm still in the process of painting the shadowy areas of this this painting and um, it's really important to define and ask yourselves uh, who, which areas are the, uh, the darkest, the lower in value and how dark these uh, are in comparison to the black uh, background uh, maybe. You always, you always have to do these comparisons and it goes uh, uh, in many directions. First, we have to compare um, always uh, the drawing, like say if these uh, shapes are correct, um, compare the shape of uh, uh, this triangle, almost shape of light on her cheek with the triangle of light on the original painting, see if it is corresponding, if it is correct as a shape, the shapes of uh, shadow, etc. And then we have to again compare the, the values, how dark and light something is. In my opinion, it's not as important uh, the, to to paint the specific, uh, let's say, hue of color when we paint. It's more important to to find uh, the the correct uh, values, uh, which areas are brighter in comparison to others, and how brighter they are in comparison to the others, and. Uh, uh, after we have uh, achieved this, uh, we have to also um, try and find the, the correct uh, hue if uh, the light in the cheek is a little bit rosier than the, the light on the forehead, which is uh, usually normally the case and uh, how much rosier it is, uh, this and that. But uh, while, uh, still, while we are keeping the values correct, the um, the values of light in each area correct. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> I try to, as I'm doing this recording, I'm trying to imagine um, what can be helpful to you, what can uh, you take from this uh, long lesson that's going to be helpful to you. And uh, um, I also, of course, try to explain what we see during the video. Still at this point I am um, in the step where I paint the, the shadows. I'm preoccupied here with the shadow areas of uh, my reference uh, photo of my study. And uh, I will go uh, a little bit darker as you see according to what I see on my reference. Oil color thin down with uh, just uh, turpentine. Here in the area between the hair and the flesh, uh, things are a little bit um, hazy, are not very clear what's uh, happening. So I don't uh, worry much, I will uh, keep things uh, unclear myself. Some This is another thing that <coughs> we have to um, understand that painting and especially great painting can be a mess. And we have to um, to embrace the the mess of uh, the painting process. Some it's not uh, always just mathemat mathematics like uh, one and one is two, but uh, sometimes there are vague uh, areas where we have to just um, do whatever we think it's uh, uh, it's appropriate. This can be another uh, obstacle for many uh, student painters. They want things to be uh, very clear, the process to be a clear process. Step one, step two, this color for this step, the other color for this step. Everything um, 
much defined with uh, recipes and uh, almost, as I say, uh, mathematic uh, way. Uh, the painting process is not like that, and the quicker we understand that things will be uh, unclear, uh, the better for uh, for us. So. Um, Again, I say this because uh, this is how I felt at this point of painting this uh, portrait here. I felt that I was going blind, I wasn't sure what I was uh, doing. But uh, I said, okay, now I'm uh, in the process of uh, painting the shadow areas. I will try my best to create uh, these uh, shadows uh, as best as I can. If I need to add some uh, dry brush, uh, I will add. If I need um, to change brush, I will change my brush because uh, this is something, again, very, very important for uh, you to take. Um, of course, uh, we were not there when these old masters painted their masterpieces and we don't know really what kind of uh, brushes they used, what kind of materials exactly they used, etc. So we have to really um, innovate a little bit. Now, when using uh, the brush, uh, I'm, I was uh, thinking to myself that uh, the only way to really paint something uh, and is to feel that uh, my tools do obey what I'm, uh, what my commands, that um, they feel comfortable in my hand. So. Um, Maybe some some teachers say that you have to use this and that and the other brush. Yes, that this is um, this can be a great advice, but at the same time, uh, we have to really wonder as we are painting if uh, our tool does the job that uh, we want it to do. If, for example, here I've used uh, a, a more thick, more coarse uh, um, brush, uh, it wouldn't do nothing that I wanted it to do. So. Um, uh, always, as you paint, uh, ask yourself if uh, your brush uh, does the job or uh, if uh, you use something else from your um, brush collection, uh, you could achieve a better, nicer uh, result. This uh, soft brush here is, help me, is helping me achieve these uh, soft, uh, um, hazy transitions. It's nice, interesting. You can use these uh, dry brushes to uh, to manipulate color, to move the color around. They are very, very useful. And then you have another brush to apply color. It's something that uh, I can't really uh, teach and say here. It's a matter of intuition and you have to use this intuition while you are painting. Um, I believe this is why painting um, is hard to, to be taught because um, it's not uh, mathematics, it's more like uh, uh, using our intuition. So here I have applied, uh, uh, I'm proceeding with painting the light areas of uh, this study and uh, I created the color on my palette that is uh, fleshy like with titanium white some uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow some yellow walker a little bit of alizarin red or cadmium red and um, i've again uh, with the the same way of uh, doing the underpainting using thinner and uh, thicker color i will uh, try to paint over these areas of uh, light in a way that is uh, nice and uh, consistent, let's say. This is uh, very similar to painting with, uh, um, with tempera so far. This is, if I had to paint this with tempera, it would be the same uh, way. I would apply thinner and thicker colors to, to give this illusion of uh, light, of transitions. <coughs> so, um, 
So going back to the discussion about the the brushes, our tools, make sure that uh, everything is uh, comfortable when you use them. From your uh, easel, like you have the right position, you have the right uh, lightning in your studio, it's very very important. Nothing to distract, to distract you or to create obstacles for you. And then, of course, uh, using the right uh, canvas, the right uh, boards, the right materials. Use uh, as quality materials uh, as you can. And um, really, it is impossible to paint uh, something like this if you don't have the the right materials and I don't necessarily mean expensive materials but still materials uh, brushes in this case that will uh, um, obey your commands and will uh, behave as you imagine they should behave so spend some uh, uh, time asking yourselves if uh, the brush works nicely. Uh, change brushes according to your intuition if you need to. See if uh, what you had in your mind works now with uh, a different brush that can be softer, um, thicker, uh, more round or whatever. And um, this is how we learn of the material. This is how we learn uh, oil painting uh, and tempera painting, uh, acrylic painting, by understanding the, uh, the materials, how they behave. It's a process that, uh, as I said earlier, doesn't really end. Like even uh, the masters, uh, uh, always uh, we are in this progress and uh, learning more of uh, of this art. And that's the beauty of painting, that uh, nobody can uh, reach to a point uh, and say, okay, now I've learned painting. It's um, an art that uh, you can't actually learn, as in so many other arts and sciences, of course. So that's why we shouldn't uh, be uh, have fear about the result of uh, our uh, uh, of our painting. It's just uh, one step. Every time we are in front of our easel, is uh, one step more into this journey of uh, painting. So, as you see here, at this point, by just the use of this fleshy color uh, in a thicker and thinner um, percentage, I will uh, I, I do this uh, blending above the grayish area of light that was uh, previously painted. Again, with uh, an almost uh, dry brush, I can uh, smoothen the, the area a little bit. As I say, I often feel that uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, sometimes things seem to have no result uh, at all, as now. But uh, if we have an idea while we're uh, painting, we definitely have to apply this idea, even if uh, it doesn't work. Uh, or it can work, of course, but even if it doesn't work, we can apply this idea. And uh, so that it uh, gets our out of our system, so that um, we can see if it works or it doesn't work, and uh, um, to see if we can uh, learn or discover something from this. Uh, very often, when we take risks or we do something we haven't done before in painting, uh, very often we succeed, and uh, the joy we take from taking risks is really really amazing 
Now here you see I've created on my palette uh, a color that uh, is slightly darker than this first uh, uh, fleshy color. I've added a little bit of this brownish color that I have uh, uh, I have created earlier and um, I've mixed this brownish shadowy color with some of this uh, fleshy color that I use for the light and with this in between color I will uh, go softly and uh, manipulate more the the areas of transition between color and light and see if I can achieve a more convincing, more uh, rich, uh, more close to the original um, transition and uh, result. As you see, this uh, step uh, takes time. Sometimes uh, we see a painting and we think that uh, it was painted automatically or um, very easily, or that these old masters with uh, a few brush strokes, uh, they achieved their beauty. But uh, we have to remind ourselves that the things <laughs> were not painted by themselves. And uh, we see some tiny detail, for example, and. Uh, uh, on the clothes or um, in the background uh, and we have to remind ourselves that uh, the painter uh, gave it some time in order to, to paint this detail, in order to paint uh, um, these transitions. Uh, it, they were not painted by themselves and uh, they definitely require some devotion and uh, time. So. Uh, really, sometimes I worry about uh, how long it can take me to achieve uh, something, but uh, then I was like, okay, let it take uh, as long as uh, it needs to, uh, but um, uh, if the result is uh, nice, then uh, it means that uh, it needed uh, this time, this much time. So. I really don't worry if you struggle a lot with uh, painting uh, something. This is the way it works. There are no easy solutions when we paint uh, something uh, like this. And of course, uh, since uh, we said that the, the, the process, the steps of painting are not uh, uh, say very defined, uh, feel free to go back and forth according to your intuition, according to what you see, your eyes, the comparisons you do with the original uh, painting. Here I'm in the process of uh, uh, doing this uh, transition between the the shadow area of this portrait and the, the light and uh, of course it does look uh, like uh, a mess as you see but uh, I say to myself okay I will give it uh, as much time as it needs to I will do my best to achieve these smooth uh, nice uh, transitions in the way I understand and uh, okay let's see I still learn something, I still uh, uh, understand uh, the materials uh, better wh while I'm doing this and uh, no matter the result, uh, on my next uh, study, on my next painting, uh, I will uh, uh, know better how the materials behave, I will know better how to... I will be more comfortable in uh, painting, the use of the brush, the use of the colors. Sometimes you can hear uh, some dogs barking. <laughs> I hope this is not very disrupting, but uh, I am a dog person. I like, uh, I have a dog of my own. It's uh, a Cretan Hound dog, just to give you some uh, uh, background here. And uh, it's uh, an amazing dog. Anyway, back to the process. Uh, as you see, I go back and forth. I create colors that can be darker or lighter within this uh, range of uh, transitions. And uh, I will try to achieve this uh, smooth effect. So far, I haven't added any 
linseed oil on uh, my palette, any extra linseed oil. I'm just thinning the color down with uh, turpentine color. <coughs> And uh, as you see, it of course, it still looks like a, a mess, but uh, already there is some um, some smoothness to this painting, some uh, nice uh, result. I have to say that uh, when I was uh, doing this, I didn't really know um, <clears throat> when to stop. Like, should I let the, the painting dry a little bit for a few days? Should I not? Um, how to proceed? I wasn't sure because uh, I didn't have my information. I had to just guess, uh, see the final portrait of Correggio and just uh, guess uh, how he must have uh, painted this. So my uh, approach to this is uh, to, to paint the portrait uh, when it's still wet for as much as uh, the color is uh, workable, as the, um, it can still accept uh, color. When we paint in oil, after a few layers of uh, wet uh, painting, things become um, really hard to be manipulated uh, if we work in this style of course things get hard so my approach is to to paint this uh, uh, painting for uh, as long as i feel that the brush uh, does its work that the wet layers underneath uh, do not uh, create obstacles and uh, make things difficult to paint so this was my only, um, let's say, way of approaching this. I have to say that uh, still, and you will see it uh, later on, that still um, I didn't feel in complete control of uh, the material. I felt that uh, I had to, ta to tame these uh, oily layers of uh, color and that uh, I was working on uh, risky, let's say, uh, land. On uh, I wasn't sure, I was feeling uh, while I was painting this that uh, with just one uh, rough uh, brush strokes uh, everything would be destroyed. So that was uh, charming of course, it was uh, interesting uh, of course, but at the same time I was on my edge while I was painting this. To me, this uh, um, being uncomfortable, as I say, it was uh, charming and okay, but at the same time, it felt that uh, I was still in this exploratory uh, mode. Um, it felt that uh, um, I hadn't really uh, unlocked the, the full technique, the secrets of these old masters. But to me it seems they were very comfortable on what they were painting, on what they were doing. Maybe yes, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, to me it seems that uh, um, too much of this uh, being so much uncomfortable when painting is not a good sign. But still uh, I, I had to proceed, still I had to uh, to move with uh, what I was uh, imagining that uh, the process would be. Still this result uh, has some uh, charm, maybe it doesn't look uh, perfect at this point, it doesn't look completely convincing, but still it has some charm. And uh, now as you see I want to um, 
I'm still in this struggle of uh, transitions between the first light, let's say, and uh, the the shadow. This is something that uh, occupies most of our effort when we paint like this, these transitions, uh, these uh, um, from the late the uh, the shadow area to the light. In a way that uh, can be convincing. And uh, the whole game is there. We see that in each uh, era in the history of art, these transitions are so different. Uh, remember how, for example, how Impressionism does these uh, transitions in a much uh, bolder way, much uh, coarser way, let's say. And um, compare this Impressionism, let's say, transitions to these uh, to the transitions that the Renaissance uh, masters used, that uh, they are these uh, sfumato, smoke-like transitions. Uh, remember and compare these with uh, the transitions in the medieval uh, period, etc. We could uh, define the periods, uh, the different periods in the history of art by just uh, looking on this uh, uh, transition area between light and shadow and how it was handled in uh, each uh, era. Again, using uh, thinner and thicker uh, layers of uh, color, again, with, uh, without being sure what I'm doing, um, I'm proceeding. Things seem uh, stable enough, they seem to proceed uh, slow enough, but, uh, as I said, it's satisfying. Applying color, then maybe uh, smoothening it with uh, this uh, dry, soft uh, brush, being careful not to wipe away anything uh, underneath. It's a back and forth uh, process according to uh, each uh, step. some thin layers of color. As I said, I have, uh, uh, after painting this study, uh, I painted the uh, Salvatore Mundi by Da Vinci, this uh, study, and uh, I have to say that uh, the results there were uh, amazing. I don't think I could have uh, reached uh, those results uh, if uh, I hadn't ex the experience uh, by painting uh, this study of Correggio here that uh, really got me to be more familiar with uh, oil painting, with uh, handling the brush in this uh, way. So I'm very excited to share with you this uh, study and show you this uh, Salvatore Mundi. So this is something that uh, we, as I say, and <laughs> I keep repeating myself, but uh, uh, on our every uh, sitting in the studio, uh, we become uh, more and more, uh, uh, we hone our skills and we get uh, uh, to achieve better results uh, in the next, for the next time.
Of course, if uh, I was painting uh, something in the style of uh, impressionism, let's say, uh, I would be I would use more thick uh, layers of color. I would be more uh, bold in the handling of uh, the brush, and the results would be uh, something uh, different. I think this uh, Renaissance. Uh, Paintings uh, require these uh, soft, uh, these uh, thin layers of uh, color and proceeding uh, meticulously, proceeding uh, carefully uh, until we have these uh, results. It looks like uh, uh, the color is still, uh, um, the painting uh, can still accept uh, color in a way that uh, doesn't create any issues, any problems. And I think uh, this happens because, uh, uh, as I said, I don't uh, use any extra linseed oil uh, while I'm painting so far. I want to thank you so much for uh, being uh, still here, for those of you who are. Um, I hope you get something out of uh, this video. I want to thank you for uh, subscribing to this channel and supporting this channel with your comments, with your uh, likes and uh, shares of this video. Uh, thank you so much. I want to thank also my supporters on uh, Patreon.com uh, on the painting, uh, painting the light uh, profile there. Um, this is an amazing uh, financial support, and uh, I try to upload exclusive uh, uh, content to thank uh, my supporters uh, there for their help because uh, this help has uh, allowed me to concentrate uh, more on my artistic efforts, to be more in the studio and uh, paint uh, more to upload more in on youtube uh, as well so really thank you all so much uh, for your support there so now i will uh, uh, proceed with uh, painting uh, some of the hair area I will let the flesh area relax uh, a little bit and uh, I'm proceeding with uh, creating a color that is uh, much uh, darker and uh, according of course to the reference photo. Researchers say that uh, Da Vinci and those painters used a lot of uh, their hands to manipulate color in some areas, their fingers. Um, it's something that uh, I find uh, it does make sense and uh, uh, I believe they used their fingers. It's just something that uh, um, I try to avo avoid as much uh, as I can. Again here, <laughs> while painting the hair, I'm not really sure what uh, I'm doing, I'm not really sure how to proceed. The hair on the painting of uh, Correggio are just so amazing. They look soft, they look uh, shiny. 
they look so great so uh, they also look very confusing in the way of painting those so i really don't know how to approach them so i tell i see how they um, how they are the you know while uh, what's the word i'm looking for um, they're mingling with the back background they have these soft uh, transitions between the background and uh, the hair so i try to achieve this uh, soft uh, hazy transition with the background and uh, on my palette i have these uh, brownish uh, golden uh, uh, colors that uh, i will apply some in the areas of uh, light and then some darker colors to apply in the areas of uh, shadows um, as you see i'm not covering the whole area with one color but uh, um, i'm using this uh, golden brown to uh, to cover the light uh, areas uh, first and uh, again by using my intuition to see how I can achieve a similar result to that of Correggio. At the same time I have this darker color and uh, I will try to mix this darker color with uh, the golden brown color that I have. So make sure that uh, you observe uh, a lot your uh, reference photo, the painting that you study. Make sure that um, be prepared for not knowing exactly uh, how to paint. Just uh, trust your intuition, trust the process, um, be bold and everything will be nice. I think it's nice uh, uh, to be to, to be told that uh, um, a, a painter doesn't really know how to paint because this is such a common place for us uh, painters to really not know what we are doing, and uh, many students believe it's just uh, them. Many students believe it's just. Uh, because they are students that they don't really know what they are painting but uh, let me ease your minds a little bit by saying that uh, it is so normal so natural to sometimes paint in blind sometimes uh, really not knowing what uh, what we are doing it's really liberating and uh, it can take off some of the pressure, some of the fears we have as uh, painters to hear it from uh, um, a teacher that um, it's fine to not to really know uh, what to do. I hope this uh, will help you uh, a lot. Some of those, some of you who struggle with uh, with doubting, with uh, uncertainty. Here uh, I, I see there is some transition between flesh and uh, hair and I want to achieve this transition so I will blend a little bit of the flesh color with the color or some of the shadowy color of uh, the hair try to see if this works if this will create a similar transition to the one that I see and uh, I often say to my students that uh, um, for cases like this, time spent on a painting is a factor that plays a role that can be seen. Um, I say to myself that, okay, maybe I don't know how what I'm doing, but uh, if I spend some time exploring and uh, imagining uh, how this was painting, and uh, if I spend some time, for sure I will achieve some uh, result, some interesting, nice uh, result uh, here. 
that uh, cannot be horribly bad. So make sure, and I often see on paintings of students, I often see this uh, time factor. I can see that they have spent some time uh, struggling on how to paint something. Um, and this is uh, definitely uh, a factor that creates quality and uh, gives uh, it uh, a visual, gives the, the painting a visual uh, richness. Our uh, enemy to this is uh, our enthusiasm, I believe. We really want to finish uh, quickly something, uh, just to get done with this, just to enjoy the, um, the finished uh, painting. And uh, we are in a hurry, let's say, to, uh, to see the final uh, result uh, in a way that... Uh, doesn't allow us to spend some time and to struggle for uh, something more. So it's a, a common struggle for uh, painters uh, this this to to finish quickly or yeah. So um, try to uh, try to um, avoid this and struggle with this uh, to spend some more time. Now, there are, I believe that uh, uh, I need to add some uh, color to liven things uh, up. The painting has uh, dried for a couple of days. So what I'm doing here, and uh, it can be a little bit uh, shocking, is uh, I create a color that is more uh, high in chroma, more saturated, and... Uh, um, again, it's the color, it's a brownish golden color that uh, um, I overpainted the shadow areas just to make the shadows more uh, saturated. And um, I applied this color in a very thin uh, coat, as you see. After this, now I am uh, proceeding with adding uh, more light on the light uh, areas. To, to liven things uh, up uh, a little bit, to make things more bright and more uh, fleshy, let's say. So the light color that I've used here is uh, titanium white with some uh, very little uh, yellow ochre, very little uh, uh, cadmium yellow and some uh, red. It can be alizarin or cadmium red. And I want to blend now this uh, by, as you see, now I've created a second light color that is slightly um, darker in value and um, higher in chroma, a more orangey, let's say, color, fleshy color with uh, more uh, cadmium yellow and, uh, um, excuse me, cadmium red and uh, yellow ochre. And I've just uh, placed these colors on these areas before uh, uh, attempting to, to blend this light with um, the previous layers that are now dry. I hope this uh, makes sense and, uh, and I really can understand how, um, how tiring this must uh, look, how meticulously or painting without um, having any uh, direct results. I can really understand this, but uh, I really can't imagine another way of uh, painting this study in a more um, quick uh, way. So after I've applied this painting, I will now proceed with uh, blending it. So I'm using uh, a brush here that uh, um, can be slightly wet with some uh, turpentine but it doesn't carry any any color on its uh, on its hairs and um, I try to blend a little bit wipe the excess uh, color it accumulates on a piece of uh, cloth and uh, see if this can bring me to some uh, interesting uh, result here 
it seems that it works uh, nicely, interestingly. On my on my right hand, uh, I have a piece of uh, cloth, or it can be paper, soft paper that I wipe the the excess uh, color. And as you see directly, it can uh, take some uh, interesting uh, volume there, some interesting uh, lightning happening there on the forehead. Again, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, I'm just going proceeding uh, blindly. If something works, uh, it works and uh, I will push in this uh, direction. But uh, as I also said, uh, I'm exploring this uh, technique and I want to see if I can really uh, discover something, if I can really learn something out of uh, this. It really is amazing how uh, painting the study, uh, I realize now as I'm rewatching this video with you, how this uh, process uh, helped me achieve the, the results on Salvatore uh, Mundi, the other study I did on, uh, on uh, Da Vinci. This um, painting of Da Vinci has a heavy usage of the sfumato technique. Um, a technique that um, Correggio has used in this uh, painting, but uh, of course Da Vinci has um, bro bring this technique into another level and um, I'm pretty sure that uh, if I hadn't painted this study before I wouldn't be able to understand the um, the way to, to paint this sfumato technique. Now things uh, seem to get uh, a little bit out of control now at this point and uh, you have to remind yourself that this sometimes can be inevitable like the manipulation of uh, oil color can be very very hard especially if you want to achieve uh, such a meticulous result sometimes it seems that uh, the color underneath is swept away or um, the result uh, looks uh, a little bit uh, clumsy but uh, as I say if we spend some time uh, we will bring it to a desired uh, result so how are you doing so far? <laughs> How is this uh, so far? I hope uh, you are not uh, sleeping. <laughs> Although, you know, listening to me can be a struggle really because of my heavy accent. Uh, as uh, many of you might know, I am uh, Greek and uh, um, I live and work in Crete, uh, the, the greatest uh, island, the biggest island of uh, Greece. Um, so I understand that uh, listening to a Greek guy with a heavy accent can be <laughs> really horrible for so much time. As I say, uh, you can definitely mute me and just uh, watch uh, the process. But uh, I also have to say that uh, I receive so many encouraging uh, comments from you about my accent, about the way I'm talking. I'm definitely not a professional, a professional uh, speaker, so that's that. Uh, but still I receive these uh, encouraging uh, comments from you and uh, thank you all so much. For me it's uh, really amazing to to receive comments of how these videos inspired you to, to get into the studio 
and uh, to paint a little more maybe if you learned something uh, helpful etc so i'm applying these uh, thin uh, uh, colors of uh, thin layers of color that can be more saturated more flesh like um, as you see there is some uh, uh, color that is swept away uh, when i'm adding this it does look uh, it does look uh, bad but uh, this is part of uh, the process i try here to correct it a little bit when uh, painting with uh, so many layers uh, it can definitely get uh, out of control as i say but uh, uh, it's a matter of uh, <laughs> it's a matter of not stressing out at this point to keep uh, pushing and uh, not um, abandon the project uh, if we see something like uh, this happening it's natural and uh, what someone can do is just uh, let the piece uh, relax for uh, some time let the colors uh, dry again for some time and uh, repaint it here at this point uh, i didn't want to uh, to let the painting uh, relax i just want to to push a little bit uh, um, while things are uh, wet i don't know if uh, that's um, that was a good idea or not but uh, and you see how horribly bad things uh, became uh, on the upper cheek of hers that's fine i mean you know as i say even if nothing uh, great comes out of this i'm still uh, um, still is something that we can uh, learn when we learn painting uh, it's uh, learning uh, of course drawing and everything uh, else uh, the color color theory etc but uh, the important is to learn in uh, action to learn in practice and uh, to learn the uh, the materials the tools of course how they behave and the materials here it seems um, um, like a disaster at this point but uh, i have to say that uh, even this was uh, great because it, uh, it got into my memory that uh, oil is very delicate, oil needs uh, uh, another way of handling. Anyway, so here as you see I'm adding a little bit of uh, brighter uh, warm colors on her uh, lips, on uh, her um, cheek just to give her a more uh, rosy look and again with this uh, soft uh, uh, brush uh, that doesn't carry any color that i wipe away its uh, excess color i will do a further blending oh my god i'm seeing this uh, now and uh, it <laughs> it really like it looks completely out of control completely horrible but it's also very interesting and nice to share these moments with you share moments of uh, disaster and uh, yeah imperfections are great we all have these moments we all have these uh, imperfections so it's really really nice and I'm pretty sure that uh, you understand uh, this, you understand um, <laughs> my struggle in painting uh, right now. And most of you, I'm sure you are shaking your head, <laughs> agreeing with uh, this, uh, with what's, what's going on here. Most of you who seriously struggle with painting uh, must have felt... Uh, how how it can be it's 
it's nice, yeah? Okay, this is the end of the <laughs> of the painting. It was nice to see you. Well. So now in order to cover things up a little bit, to proceed, um, I guess I really wanted a color that is uh, slightly more... Uh, uh, more thick, not as uh, uh, as thin as before, and um, I add a little bit here at this point. Uh, I add a little bit of uh, linseed oil. Linseed oil will allow the color to uh, to stay on top of the previous layer. Uh, the rule is in painting with oils. On each layer, we have to add uh, some more linseed oil, some more oil sub substance. Um, this helps the color to to sit. And uh, uh, this is what I've done here. So I'm using this uh, color that uh, contains a little bit more of linseed oil. And uh, see how this uh, previous uh, mishap, let's say, um, made me... A work more, a little bit more on the shadow area, create this more thick uh, uh, color and uh, creating these uh, more rich uh, layers of uh, color in the shadow area. I don't really mind uh, um, you can see that uh, you can still see this uh, issue underneath uh, the on the upper cheek. There is some slight issue, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. So it was an opportunity for me to add uh, a shadow color that is uh, a little bit more uh, uh, cold. There was, as you saw, slightly a greenish, uh, grey greenish uh, color that uh, I've used. And uh, here uh, you see on the reflections how oily it looks now with the use of uh, extra linseed oil on my palette. So I, uh, while I was painting this and um, followed my intuition, I realized that I have to go slightly uh, thicker, a little bit at this point, to be a little bit more bold. And... Uh, uh, apply colors that can be warmer and um, fleshier, let's say. Apply colors and just blend them in a more uh, in a more bold uh, way. I'm very glad that this is uh, on this video. You can see these uh, um, these moments of. Uh, um, of a feeble, let's say, painting, these moments of uh, um, painting in doubt, how uh, the issues we encounter can um, push us to give other solutions, um, how this is great video to see how painting is not um, always a step of uh, a, a series of steps one to three but uh, it can change according to what's happening on the painting and um, how dynamic this uh, process can be according to to what's going on so um, in my opinion this is a great video for uh, those of us who struggle with uh, um, the process of painting <coughs> who have a fear. Um, many students tell me how they are afraid to to get into the studio and they postpone their uh, visit, their studio practice. Um, they find other things to, um, to justify uh, why they don't get into the studio. So um, this, as I say, must be something that uh, all uh, uh, artists struggle with because uh, we have to uh, to get into a region of mind uh, where we struggle with uh, uncertainty, we struggle with uh, doubts, uh, with uh, process, with materials that uh, don't behave. Uh, so it's uh, really natural. 
but uh, this was a great example here how um, we should uh, embrace this uh, embrace or embrace these uh, issues these problems we encounter and uh, proceed So as you see, it's a process of uh, now manipulating color, um, going back and forth uh, in terms of uh, blending the color, creating color that uh, can be in areas a little bit less uh, saturated, and uh, manipulating the color in a way that looks uh, interesting. When I'm saying manipulating, as you see here, I'm again using uh, a drier brush to um, to blend uh, areas. I'm going back and forth between shadowy colors and uh, flashy light colors, adding uh, and subtracting, maybe. Here a little bit more uh, light on the cheek. Really, oil painting can be <laughs> very hard because uh, with just a little uh, extra brush, things can be, you know. But at the same time, uh, with oil, you can uh, still. Uh, correct, uh, we can still uh, um, blend easily than uh, acrylic. I really don't know. Sometimes I, I perceive myself as uh, a tempera painter. I feel comfortable with uh, tempera painting, but uh, there is no way that uh, if uh, someone is interested in these soft, uh, hazy transitions, uh, they're really it's so hard to be achieved with uh, a, with tempera painting. Tempera has uh, some other kind of uh, sharpness to it, some other kind of uh, beauty. But uh, definitely is more uh, um, workable than uh, than uh, oil painting. Of course, if uh, somebody is. Uh, um, familiarized with uh, oils, uh, this is truly a uh, beautiful, amazing uh, material. As I proceed with uh, painting uh, lighter areas of uh, flesh, uh, I want the color that I'm using to be more pinkish, like uh, the percentage of uh, yellow it has becomes um, lessens becomes uh, more uh, little and the percentage of uh, uh, red it contains uh, is uh, greater of course uh, it contains more uh, titanium white but uh, less uh, yellow and more uh, more red so that it is going to have this bright pinkish uh, hue When we paint uh, in uh, this style, uh, I believe um, dry, soft, dry brushes are uh, important. They play a huge role in this blending. Sometimes uh, when we use these dry brushes, it seems like uh, they're doing nothing but uh, they certainly do they certainly uh, move color around and they create these beautiful nice transitions really it doesn't seem uh, uh, bad of course uh, it doesn't seem um, you know the perfect uh, uh, 
the perfect uh, study, but uh, I'm still fine with this. As I say, um, I definitely believe that uh, I've learned a lot by doing this uh, this study. So I'm fine. Now I'm using uh, uh, an even softer round brush for some detail in uh, blending. And I can add a little bit of uh, shadow. Sometimes when it is uh, uh, our personal work or if we talk about contemporary painting, uh, sometimes this uh, uncertainty when we paint uh, creates uh, a visual uh, charmness, something uh, nice. Um, I mean, of course, we have painters that we can see how dexterous, how um, skilled they are in their paintings. Um, some other times, uh, and we enjoy that, some other times we see painters that are not as um, um, skilled, maybe, they are not as, uh, they will not achieve this kind of uh, blending and uh, flesh painting uh, uh, perfectly, but uh, it's uh, the struggle uh, and the time that took them uh, trying to achieve something like this that uh, creates this uh, charm on uh, the painting. I don't know. Um, the important is to um, really be in the spirit of uh, learning, really be in this spirit of uh, improving and uh, trying to understand and uh, love painting that uh, will give us uh, beautiful, amazing uh, results that uh, will create works of art really that uh, they are not just, uh, you know, studies of the old masters but uh, they have a life of their own and um, especially, uh, of course, I'm talking about our own personal, original, prototype uh, work uh, be um, when I have to paint something that is um, an idea of mine, um, not just a study, I approach this with uh, sincerity. I try to be sincere to, um, to my voice, to what I want to say. I try to, um, to not uh, be in a hurry and finish uh, the painting just for the sake of finishing it, but to give all my true attention, all my true love, and uh, um, always be in the spirit of uh, learning. Like even when I'm painting my personal work where uh, we have no comparison, something to compare it with, it's completely original, even then I don't feel, uh, um, I don't feel as, you know, the great master that, uh, um, that <laughs> really knows what he's doing, uh, but uh, I'm painting in this spirit of uh, exploring, of uh, maybe um, uh, understanding uh, more of the materials and uh, having uh, ideas while I am uh, painting. I'm really open to the inspiration that comes uh, while we are uh, painting. And in this spirit of uh, uh, being uh, sincere and uh, being humble towards uh, this uh, art of painting, which is amazing. I don't know if I make sense. I sometimes uh, mumble uh, without, uh, you know, but without being sure if uh, you guys understand. And, uh, yeah.
really uh, as painters uh, we have to really respect painting this uh, tradition that uh, is uh, so you know it's a part of humanity um, we humans painted from uh, from early on um, to love painting to respect to um, to really approach it in this spirit of learning and respect anyway as you see i'm going uh, on the painting process uh, back and forth blending using uh, uh, all the soft brushes uh, to to do this of course uh, having these imperfections is um, okay i guess and uh, of course for those of you who are still here congratulations <laughs> thank you so much uh, it seems that uh, you find something uh, interesting and you take something out of for this lesson One thing I want to say at this point, uh, you see underneath the eye and a little bit above the eye, uh, I have used these uh, warm uh, transitions. Uh, I have to just let me allow me to say something about uh, the yellow color in general. Yellow is truly a magic color in my opinion because it creates this, uh, it gives life in the color. Um, and uh, if we learn to use it discreetly, it can really lighten things up, it can really make things more uh, interesting, more... Uh, um, how can I say? It's a color that uh, I use uh, in almost uh, anything uh, I paint, uh, no matter if it is shadow or light, it's a color that uh, does add, uh, does create something uh, vivid. So, if we are not using um, yellow much, although I don't think uh, everybody, <laughs> of course, uses yellow, but uh, really observe uh, what it does to to the painting. So now um, I decided to let the painting relax for uh, a couple more days and uh, now I feel that um, I can add a little bit more uh, light here. And uh, do some uh, blending and uh, then I will be done. So I'm placing this uh, color The underneath layer is uh, dry of course Creating a color that is closer to the previous layer And then some uh, dry almost uh, blending sometimes it seems that the process of painting can never end that we could paint something over and over and over um, until uh, you know, this is a similar case here. And it's also an interesting uh, part of learning how to paint is uh, to, to know when to call it uh, a day, when to finish uh, a work of a painting. It's really important to, to know. Sometimes um, 
it's good to to push for something more because uh, when we push we get into an area of risk of sometimes an area when where uh, we encounter for the first time issues we encounter for the first time and it's nice sometimes to push of course uh, there's the risk uh, when we push uh, a lot but uh, we will um, probably destroy or instead of improving the painting um, there's a risk that uh, we destroy the painting that's fine that's fine it's a nice and important and i really enjoy um, those students who um, are not very much uh, um, attached to their uh, um, paintings. Uh, I also try to do this myself. I paint something and uh, I truly don't want it to be extremely attached. No matter how much I like the painting, um, it's uh, it's a work that uh, um, I have stud students who don't, really don't want to um, to give away their paintings, even if they are uh, paid for or um, they feel that uh, it's really the the masterpiece of the century it can be yes but uh, in my opinion is uh, it's more helpful to not be attached uh, to our paintings too much and um, this is because uh, uh, it brings us into the correct perspective of uh, it's a painting and uh, um, it's not the end of the journey, but it's part of our uh, painting journey. Um, we will paint uh, something better next time. Um, so I know that uh, often we are proud of our paintings and it's nice to be proud. I remember and still now I, when I paint something, uh, especially when I take a risk and paint something that uh, I haven't uh, done before, I really am excited and I really want to, to stare the painting uh, day and night uh, for the first uh, few days and especially until I paint my next painting. And uh, this is really, really nice and uh, feeds the, the artist, feeds the painter. At the same time, feel free to believe that uh, your next painting will be even more great and uh, to not be emotionally much attached to, to your works. This will uh, help you um, take more uh, risks. This will help you um, be in this exploratory uh, mode um, to be ready to encounter new challenges and new issues and to solve these new issues. I remember back in the 90s when I was a teenager um, painter and uh, it was the first time I would, you know, the first uh, period when I was playing with uh, colors, I was so much <clears throat> thrilled with uh, my paintings that uh, I just couldn't uh, stop staring at them. Uh, of course, when uh, now I'm looking back on those paintings, uh, they are, you know, horrible. They are not uh, something of value, but uh, of course they have personal value for me but uh, uh, I remember how attached I was to these uh, paintings so I'm glad that uh, I got over uh, this and uh, uh, I permitted myself to explore uh, to explore painting uh, more without uh, being stuck on a specific way of painting and specific subject or something that uh, I was feeling safe to paint. Safe to paint is not <laughs> is not safe. So as you see here, back and forth, back and forth, blending, um, moving color.
and of course as we proceed as I proceed with painting this color becomes uh, thicker of course not as much as uh, um, the impasto that uh, many other painters used like uh, Rembrandt uh, and others but uh, uh, still um, there is some uh, uh, thickness of color here make sure when you paint these lights to not uh, overdo them to not uh, uh, whiten everything uh, so that uh, they lose uh, so that color loses its uh, intensity make sure that uh, um, you still have areas of flesh that uh, are uh, um, warm and uh, rosy and uh, um, saturated. Now at this point if I step back a little bit and half close my eyes, this looks like uh, um, a, an interesting uh, study. This looks like uh, the uh, the volumes are revealed. This looks like um, something of uh, that has uh, taught me something. My dog Zafiris seems to agree with uh, what I say. This really was uh, uh, a big, a uh, long lesson. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, if there was something that uh, uh, struck you um, as interesting, as uh, worth commenting uh, on. I would uh, um, appreciate some uh, feedback from you on, uh, on this lesson. I, as, it, as I say, I often feel that uh, I'm just mumbling, saying things that um, uh, wouldn't be of uh, artistic interest, but uh, yeah, who knows. I can see these uh, flows on uh, the areas of uh, the shadow, like in the forehead, you see how there was swept away some color and it uh, shines through, it can still be seen through. For some reason uh, it doesn't seem to, to bother me so much as to, um, as to attend to it and uh, correct it a little bit. It seems to me... Uh, as okay, here on the video it seems a little bit more uh, uh, prominent, more of an issue. In reality, it's not as much, but um, yeah. Now I'm uh, intensifying a little bit uh, uh, some dark uh, areas that might have lost their intensity by the previous uh, blending. And, uh, yeah. I guess uh, what you can take uh, from this video is um, how long it can take to to achieve something like this, especially uh, those of us who are that are exploring um, the materials, uh, how much effort uh, it needs, how much uh, time it will take to achieve something like this.
this is uh, i believe what you can take from uh, this video let me know if uh, um, something else was uh, useful uh, for you and of course to uh, to to be in this state to uh, to take with us the state of uh, messiness of doubt to be comfortable with uh, that and to expect uh, um, something like that that's good for the painting see here how i'm using this uh, darker uh, yellowy color to intensify a little bit these areas of uh, shadows how i'm applying it and uh, also blend it uh, slightly remember that uh, shadows are so important shadows are um, the the shapes that uh, reveal light that uh, if we want uh, lights to be intense we have to create these uh, intense uh, shadows in color in uh, uh, value like uh, don't be afraid of uh, painting these shadows as dark uh, they should be since these intense areas of darks will play a substantial role in uh, revealing volume in uh, you know in the beauty of the of the painting always ask yourself um, are there areas that need to be more intense in chroma in uh, darkness in light are there uh, anything is there anything else that I can add that will uh, intensify the painting that will make it more uh, rich and uh, don't be afraid to take this risk even if it means more work to take a risk and uh, uh, apply these uh, in intensities um, and see if uh, they will truly transform or give something extra to your painting. I'm moving now with painting a little bit uh, the, the hair, make it uh, more uh, um, bright in some areas again. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just uh, feel that uh, I have to brighten things uh, up uh, a little bit. It seems that the first, uh, the previous layer of uh, uh, color manipulation on the hair um, was uh, gave me this uh, dark, uh, darker hair that than I wanted. So now I will proceed with. Uh, um, leveling things up a little bit and lighting the hair a little bit more. So I will add these uh, brighter colors as my light. Remember that uh, the layers underneath are uh, completely dry now. And uh, using my intuition I will try to create this brush strokes that uh, resemble the hair, resemble the brush stroke of uh, Correggio. <coughs> hair are very, very important because, uh, as of course you know, uh, because they give life to the painting, they will add so much uh, beauty to, to each painting if they are painted correctly and uh, it's something that uh, does require our uh, our effort, our attention when we paint. I see this beautiful shine uh, hair on the reference photo painted by Correggio. This uh, silky, soft, uh, dark brown, uh, uh, reddish almost uh, hair. And uh, I really am amazed by his uh, skills. I really am amazed by the level of uh, his uh, um, painting uh, quality. Um, you know... Always uh, comparing ourselves to those masters can be deadly. 
So I don't really know how to approach this. Um, of course, it's always different uh, painting and trying to copy uh, an original work of uh, them the, rather than creating an original uh, work. Um, so uh, trying to to recreate the same brush strokes or the same shapes of light and shadow, the colors uh, can be requires some uh, uh, other approach than uh, creating an original uh, work. Um, so I try to not uh, compare myself as a painter to those masters. I just uh, admire them and I want to uh, to learn something out of uh, out of them. I'm not sure if uh, comparing myself to them will um, um, is something useful or it has some uh, some merit, something uh, that's uh, really um, helpful. Um, you see here, here directly get some nice uh, flowness to it, some nice uh, free, this free brushstroke uh, give uh, and transfer this sense of uh, soft, uh, rich hair. It's really interesting. I was seeing the other day some uh, artworks by Tintoretto. It was a painting by uh, the Italian painter Tintoretto, and uh, his uh, uh, approach to hair painting was so free, like so, the brush strokes were extremely free, and uh, still they. Mm, you could see the, you could see that this is just brush stroke, but still. Uh, they tra they conveyed this sense of uh, hairiness in such a beautiful and convincing way. So nice. This is the magic of uh, painting. Um, sometimes uh, I see photorealistic uh, contemporary paintings that they truly are like uh, photography. Um, to me, it is it has its own interest, and uh, I don't want to. Uh, to you know cancel this but uh, to me the magic is uh, to use the, the the brush strokes in such a way that uh, although they are just uh, brush strokes um, they convey the um, the texture of things the shininess of things uh, you can this uh, is so evident in the great masters uh, like Velázquez El Greco uh, Rembrandt etc they don't they don't try to hide their brush strokes. They don't want to uh, create, uh, you know, a perfect illusion of, uh, you know, reality. But uh, still, they give us this uh, um, this uh, vision of uh, reality with the use of uh, brush strokes. It's painting. We don't want to deny the the, mater the material of uh, painting. We don't want to deny the handling of uh, its tools, the brush strokes. It is painting, it's not photography. So um, the mastery of painting is to, to use uh, these brushes in such a way that uh, will be convincing and uh, um, charming and nice without denying that uh, what you see is painting, pigments, use of uh, the brush. Anyway, these were one of the thoughts that uh, might uh, you might find uh, useful and interesting in this lesson. Transparent colors, thicker colors, darker colors, lighter colors, all at once, uh, with the use of uh, your talent, with the use of your intuition, they can give us these beautiful, beautiful results. Feel free to uh, recreate this study. Um, see if uh, this can give you something uh, nice this can give you something that uh, uh, 
you will take uh, back uh, on the next time you will paint. For me, it was. Uh, I have to say that uh, yes, it was uh, more than two hour video, like two hour and uh, uh, fifteen minutes, something like that. But uh, I want to thank you for. Uh, being here still for those uh, of you who are um, but uh, I also felt uh, as if I was giving uh, you know almost a presentation a lecture I felt uh, this nice uh, uh, communication connection with you for these two hours and um, although I don't know you of course uh, personally but uh, I do, I do want and I do wish that uh, you are well, healthy, you are taking something useful of, uh, from these videos. Um, so, definitely. And as I said earlier, uh, before, uh, take care, we should take care of our uh, mental uh, health, our mental balance, the same way uh, we attend to our diet, to our exercise uh, re regime. Um, so, painting is such an amazing way to keep ourselves uh, healthy and um, mentally balanced. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, since you are uh, so far in this video, I have to tell you that uh, if it wasn't for my studio practice, I would definitely be in uh, trouble with uh, um, with uh, mental issues. I would definitely struggle with uh, some issues like that. Life can be unexpected, hard. Life uh, has uh, sorrows, not only jo joys, joys of course, but also sorrows. And we definitely feel we need to um, to use all our tools in order to to be helped painting and uh, the arts being creative no matter what we do sometimes we can change uh, uh, a faucet we can change uh, you know a plug uh, electricity plug and we feel great so doing something with our hands farming gardening anything painting sculpture photography anything creative can give us so many things as you see the the portrait here comes to an end little by little um, i don't think it's a point where i don't think i can um, give this something uh, more uh, i took uh, so many things from this portrait and uh, yeah I hope also you found this video interesting. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Again, thanks uh, to all my pa Patreon supporters. I give these uh, uh, live streams. Uh, we have these live stream uh, meetings on my Patreon page and it would be great to, uh, to see you there where we can discuss uh, artistic issues on uh, various uh, styles like um, Renaissance painting, medieval, Byzantine painting uh, and contemporary issues. It's really great. This, uh, these meetings with my Patreon supporters <clears throat> are so fantastic. And uh, um, again, thank you so much for your support there. Thank you all so much here for your amazing, beautiful comments. I really... Um, I really look forward to to see and take some <clears throat> feedback from you from this video. Some shiny hairs here and there, and uh, the portrait comes to its uh, completion little by little. So, now if uh, um, I had you live here with, live uh, with me, I would get some questions, but uh, since it's a one-part uh, presentation, <laughs> I will uh, wait to read them on your comments.
thank you all so much for being here again. Uh, I hope this was uh, useful and helpful to you. Stay really healthy, uh, stay creative, be in the studio. And uh, I will see you soon with my uh, Sfumato video. And uh, I'm really excited to share with you um, the image that I've painted. Um, my dog says uh, goodbye and uh, goodbye from me as well. Be creative. I will see you soon with uh, uh, another video. Bye.